wonderful friend. If I could only get him to eat something. <laughs> now you got to pray for him because he's riding back to the Carolinas with Brother Greg. So I don't know if he's going to survive that trip. But I love Brother Prayman, our missionary, our friend. And every time he's been here, he's been a tremendous yes. blessing. Amen. And I love him. I really do. The day I met him, my spirit hooked up with him. And I just appreciated him. And every now and then I get him on my mind and I'll call Trinidad and see if I can't get him on the phone. And uh, he's a blessing. Brother, Brother Prime, when you come, you mind the Lord, brother. I'm glad goodness of yeah. keeps following us, brother. Amen. Love you, brother. Love you too, my brother. Amen. Let it rip. Thank you. Please send in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26. Father, we love you tonight for your precious blood, your many goodness. Lord, we thank you for the way your sweet Holy Spirit flow all day to day. We, Lord, we pray for continuity of your sweet Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that everything would be for your honor, for your glory. Save the lost, encourage the Christians. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Foster and Emmanuel Baptist Church, your Lord, a love for you, their love for missionaries and one another. Lord, thank you for this great time. Lord, for treating us missionaries like royalty, Father. Lord, we are not accustomed to that. Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dr. Curtis Hudson used to say that godly man when he was preaching he said you cannot get these days you cannot get a holy grunt from a Baptist <laughs> fallas for a good amen but I'll take a holy grunt tonight yeah. <laughs> amen what a camp meeting I I wish I'd known Brother Phillips. Pastor Phillips made, said something today. He said, He who angers you controls you. Yeah. I wish I'd known that a few years ago. Because my hair would have been black. <laughs> <laughs> and that was good, brother. He who angers you controls you. That's good. But we have had good preaching tonight. Um, already James Amen. chapter 5 well, we could just close the book and go home and know we have met with the Lord tonight Amen. know we have met with the Lord tonight boy I changed my message so many times what I studied last night I changed it because I just want to be in the Holy Spirit Amen. change it um, I just love the way God the Holy Spirit moved this morning yeah. Amen 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 Bless the Lord. You see, do you know what's the difference between an evangelist and a missionary? Oh, this is real deep now. <laughs> a missionary begs the pastor to come in. An evangelist is invited in. What about that? <laughs> Listen. When a pastor sees us in a conference... Or he walk the next side, far from a missionary. Yeah. He he avoids eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> Am I communicating, brother? <laughs> don't make, you don't make eye contact with a missionary. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a friend that called me in Trinidad and invited me to this meeting. put me up in Holiday Inn. Boy, I always wanted to know what it feels like to run with the top dogs. <laughs> always. Boy, and it's a good feeling. <laughs> to be called in Trinidad 
to be invited to preach in the United States of America, to be put up in Holiday Inn. You see, when I was in elementary school, our school went on a field trip. The field trip was to look at Holiday Inn. I was amazed. I saw a little bit of water coming up out of the ground, called it a fountain, and I said, wow. And today, boy, this top dog was not only in holiday, and he was sleeping <laughs> in air condition. Man, when I come down for breakfast, I dress good, look good, like a top dog, like the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> walking for breakfast. I mean, this potong act important. You know? Boy, it was wonderful. But the only thing they realized that I'm, they realized that I'm not really important because I eat like a vagrant. <laughs> <laughs> so the, <laughs> they said, this man has no class. But I was in, don't include these minutes, Pastor. Deduct these minutes for my message. Yeah, deduct these minutes. Yeah, deduct. <laughs> but I was in a Mexican buffet during our 11 to 12 summer. But Mexican food is good food. Mm -hmm. Boy, talking food. Amen. But when I went in, the owner, the <laughs> but uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I dress good, but I eat like a vagrant. That sells me out, you know. <laughs> That, that, that show that I have no class. Amen. You know, I don't pick up a knife and fork and eat like a sissy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, mean, I see people fighting up with a piece of chicken to cut it to look dignified. Man, you pick up the thing and eat it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The, the owner of the restaurant, he, he, he put me right where he could see me. And he watched me and he stared me down to make me feel as uncomfortable as possible. But you can't make a Trinidadian feel uncomfortable about eating. <laughs> I ate and ate and ate and ate and I ate. Of course, the most expensive thing. But when a man see me left, he breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> the next day I went back. He said, you sit right here, you sit right here. I said, no. I'm going to sit where I want to sit. I'm sitting quite on in the corner down there, right on in the back. <laughs> so in that way, he wouldn't see how much food I'm eating. <laughs> but this man, him and others, they came every minute and watched staring my plate like this. Boy, they had some pineapples, real pineapples, not from the can. Boy, I took so much, I'd have to hide it on my rice and among the meat, you know, so you wouldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and crush avocados. But he was, boy, I was doing some justice to that. <laughs> boy, and again, when I left, it was, <sighs> praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I cannot act dignified for too long, but I try. I tried, I try. But boy, I really appreciate being in Holiday Inn. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate our love. I really appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Matthew 26, verse 6. Amen. We'll take a holy grunt tonight. I wonder. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. And when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. And poured it on his head as he sat at meat. 
But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? No, it was the disciples. The disciples were saying, What purpose is this waste? Imagine the disciples of Jesus said to the woman that you are wasting that which is precious on Jesus. I can imagine if it was the enemy of Jesus that said that. But his own disciples, his own disciples said that. May I declare to us tonight that you can never waste that which is precious on Jesus. Amen. You can never waste your precious time serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You can never waste your precious gas coming to church. Never waste your time that which is precious to be in the house of the Lord. You can never waste your time which is precious reading his word. You can never waste your money serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You can never waste that which is precious on Jesus. His disciples said you are wasting that which is precious on Jesus. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble thee the woman? For she had wrought a good work upon me. For she had wrought a good work upon me. I've seen this work this week, a good work wrought upon Jesus. I thank God for that precious alabaster box that was broken and poured on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good work. Not only that, Jesus said this, for ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman had done be told for a memorial of her. Yeah. Wherever this gospel is preached in the entire world, it must be mentioned that this woman poured that which is precious on me. Yes. 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 Wow. This, this morning, a dear saint of God, an elderly lady, I bought my hand. This is my most humiliating, well, sorry, not humiliating, humbling experience I've ever experienced in my entire life. I bought. I did this to shake this dear saint of God's hand. She's not here tonight. You know what she did? She took my hand and she kissed it. She kissed my hand. She might kiss my hand. She kissed my hand. Lord, Lord, she kissed my hand. I said, Lord, Lord, I must serve you. I must love you. When somebody loves you, I look up to you like that. You can't fail a person like that. It caused me to want to love Jesus and to serve him and to be faithful to him. This lady, this lady kiss my hand. Church tonight, you can never waste that which is 
precious on Jesus. You know why? Because he died. Because he shed his precious blood. He took that which is precious. Peter referred. Peter who denied Jesus. He is the one who referred to the blood of Jesus as precious. He went on that cross of Calvary. And he shed that which is precious. For you and I. You know something church? I was saved 37 years ago. I thank God when that old ship of Zion passed by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thank God when the captain Jesus called out to come aboard. Yeah. And I came. I thank God that a ship what a many a storm. Mm. But never lost a sailor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thank God that I did not die in my sins. Yeah. 37 years ago, thank God for American missionary that turned his Bible, that had the spiritual fortitude to open his Bible in Exodus 20 and tell this Hindu boy, thou shalt not worship idols. Thank God. Yeah. For a preacher with spiritual fortitude, Dr. Richard Keeler, medical doctor by profession. Mm -hmm. Or this former Hindu boy, give his heart to Jesus. Yeah. And you know what? I am not no more saved after 37 years. Right. Yeah. I'm no more saved. Right. Isn't Jesus wonderful tonight? Yeah. Church, let me tell you something tonight. Let me tell you something. I thank God for heaven. I thank God for the streets of gold. I thank God for the pearly gates. I thank God for that crystal stream. I'm from the Caribbean and that crystal wheel of water, crystal stream, running from the throne of gold. I can see it. All my life I watch it. In my mind I can see it. When Zacharias prayed all his life for his wife to conceive. She never did. When he became an old man, the angel Gabriel came to him and said, your prayer is answered. He did not believe the angel Gabriel. Can anybody recall what the angel Gabriel said to Zacchaeus? This is what he said. He said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I thank God for the streets of gold. I thank God for my mansion. But what makes heaven great is to be in the very presence of the Messiah. That's what makes heaven great. It is to be standing in his presence. Presence. That's what Zachariah said. I am it said to Zachary, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I stand in the presence of God. That's what makes heaven great. To be in the very presence of the Messiah. The one who said, Let there be. And there was. Church tonight, you can never waste. That which is precious on you. Never. Church. Because Isaiah the prophet said, in whom we have redemption yeah. through his blood, right. even the forgiveness of yeah. sin. Right. We can never waste that which is precious oh. on Jesus. Right. Right. I thank God. I thank God for those who have been breaking alabaster box all week long. Church, you know when the Apostle Paul was in that shipwreck. Church, him and others fought it for 14 days. Day and night they fought. I don't know if you have experienced being close to death. 
They were close to death every second and every minute and every hour of the day. For 14 days, they were seeing death. The winds were strong. The waves were tossing that ship. The rain was falling heavily on them. Their skin was scorched with the sun and the blistering socks. For 14 long days. After shipping that, the worst part of it, they were instructed that not a man must be allowed. They're facing death from the elements for 14 days. And they were instructed that if they survive, they have to be shot to death in case they swim to shore. The Bible said, the Bible said that the barbarians, barbarian means savage uncivilized uneducated the barbarians show them no little kindness church no little kindness dango god's soldier have been suffering suffering and suffering beaten about and thank god any any soldier have been beaten up knocked down could do with a letter of kindness. Right. 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 The barbarian, savage, uneducated people showed no little kindness. Church, you know, sometimes the child of God, the child of God, you know, thank God, my Jesus. He looked past my faults yeah. and he saw my need. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No little kindness when he went on that cross and shed that which is precious yeah. for my sin. But sometimes you come in the house of the Lord and in the house of the Lord you really meet some savage. You really meet savage and uncivilized. But thank God, church. Thank God. They showed no little kindness. And yeah. today I am here to say thank you yeah. for showing us yeah. no little kindness. I am here. I am here to remind us you can never waste that which is precious on Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.